Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So today I'm going to show you guys how to turn paint into money, some paint into some serious money. So this job here, I did it about November last year it was actually, so yeah, over six months ago. It was a friend of mine's car. She's actually the local hairdresser there in Osborne Park in Perth. She used to cut my hair and she ended up becoming good friends of mine. So. It ends up that she must park this thing in the supermarket car park every single day and as you can tell there's one hell of a lot of dents all over this car and there's one really big one through the door there and yeah just a few little sort of parking dents or uh, all over it really. So on this job here we're just going to be smashing straight through the work. I'm just going to be giving you guys a quick look at each stage and just sort of doing my best to talk to you through the job. So as it turned out, this was on a weekend. I did this job on a Saturday and a Sunday. So my boss actually wanted me to come in on that Saturday and he's like, oh, do you reckon you could um, paint this job for me on the Saturday? And I said, yeah, okay, I don't mind coming in. I'll paint that job for you, but don't pay me for it. I'm not gonna clock on. I don't want you to pay me for that, but just let me come in and paint this car for my friend. So like a lot of the materials I did actually provide myself so it wasn't costing him too much money. It was mainly just the workshop time. I pinched a bake so I did actually bake that primer. I think I did use a little bit of his own filler as well. As it turned out there was a panel beater in there. Um, this was Saturday morning when I started this job. So I got the panel beater. I said, oh, do you want to just give us a hand for like an hour or two? So I actually did pay the panel beater. I said just 50 bucks an hour. I think I paid him a couple of hours labor to just get his hammer and dolly and, and you know, just bash up some of the dents, um, some of the worst ones. And then um, he, he stripped a few of the parts off. And as much as anything, that was just to help me save time because well, going into this day, I didn't quite realize I was going to be able to get it all painted in one day, but I got this entire job repaired um, and primed and painted, like all masked and painted and baked and everything in the one day's work. So that was, I was pretty impressed with that. And looking back on that, I'm still pretty impressed with that. But at the end of the day, that is your skills and knowledge and love of the trade all coming together to line your pockets with some sweet cash. So that's the kind of thing that doesn't happen by accident. And look, it's looking like uh, a bit of inflation is on the way. So I'm gonna go on a little bit of a rant about uh, getting skills. And I was listening to Warren Buffett. And if you don't know who Warren Buffett is, he's a one of the world's richest men and he's a big investor. And what he was saying that you should do in times of inflation is, upskill basically and yeah the more you can do the more you're worth so yeah just make yourself worth more the more handy you are like and that's what he was saying like if you're a doctor be the best doctor if you're a painter be the best painter that you can be and even learn those things on the sides of painting like how to strip cars out uh, like how to do the panel beating side of things which is pretty much what I've done on you know in my trade as well like I know how to do the remove and refit. I know how to do, well, I mean, medium, medium to small dents, I'm, I'm okay at. Like, if you get me on the structural stuff, yeah, I might not be the best at it. But to be honest, I've, I actually have done some structural work as well. Like, there was a point where I got right into the panel beating side of things. So what I used to do is get all the paint work done um, and then come down and, yeah, annoy the panel beaters and say, hey, can I help you out here? Can I help you out there? Can I learn a bit of remove and refit and then yeah I got to the point where I did a few like uh, I welded a few back panels on and like radiator support panels so yeah I've, I've actually sort of done quite a lot in this trade and I do recommend that like there's there's only one thing between you and learning something new and that's really you um, especially these days with the internet like you can do online courses and stuff like that and and the more you know the more you're worth as a person so that's one thing I do recommend, especially in times like this when it's looking like uh, some inflation and some hard times might be on the horizon. Um, just yeah, work hard. <laughs> that's that's my that's my advice. It's it's worked for me in my entire life, and yeah, don't be afraid to get in there and get your hands dirty and do a hard day's work. I mean, this day here, I woke up at 5 a.m. I think I was in at work by 5:30. I didn't get home until 6.30 at night and look, I'm gonna be honest, the cash was what was driving me and at the end of the day, like I didn't have to get it done in the one day. I didn't have to get it painted in the one day. 
But I just thought, well, you know what? If I do, well, then I can have next weekend off. So, you know, most people probably wouldn't have done it the way that I did it. Most people would, probably wouldn't have rushed it out in one day. But, yeah, I did. And, um, yeah, it's those skills that, that got us there. And but this is my friend's car anyway. So, you know, I, I wasn't sort of like rushing it to the point of not doing a good enough job. I did the job to the quality that she expected she just wanted a bit of a tidy up on the car you know and this is what I talk about like I've, I've done a couple of other videos where I said oh you know not every car needs to be treated the same you know like this is this is little more than a shopping cart at the end of the day and I had a few people agree with me like they're like man I, I own a Maserati or I, no what was it he owns a Aston Martin then he owns his Toyota and he's like man my Toyota is just a shopping cart yeah sure like if there's heaps of dents in it you'll probably get it fixed but it's it's not like you have to get rid of every single nib in it. It's not like you mind even if you, like I masked up the tail lights on this, big deal. But all that aside, the base coat I was just spraying down was the Stando Blue base coat. So it's a very rapid application. It's pretty much just the two coats or one and a half coat. Like the, the second coat is really just a bit of a drop coat. And um, yeah, you just sort of hold the gun back and sort of slow down a little bit on that second coat and look at how easy that stuff lays down like those silvers just lay down so easy man and you know, i was using the te10 air cap on the standard blue base coat i've found look i've found that pretty much any air cap and any spray gun for that matter will spray standard blue just fine but if i had to choose i would say te10 is my favorite for spraying it and when you can get results like that well why wouldn't you so the clear coat I'm using here is the Quartz Crystal Clear. It's a clear which I loved when I was spraying this job. I loved when I was spraying the roof on my own Corolla. So I had a, a full kit of this stuff and I used it up on a few of my own jobs that I did around this time, right? So I actually did paint this car quite a while ago now, like, yeah, six to eight months ago. Um, and at the time I was loving it, I was like, yeah, man, it's nice and thick. It goes on with a nice film build on it, nice and clean. And, and then I got to the point where I had to polish it. And that was on the roof of my own black roof on my own Corolla. And it was an absolute nightmare. So as it turned out, this job here, I did not buff any of the stuff that I painted. It just didn't need it. It held such a good gloss. All I ended up doing was spending the time that I would have nibbed um, the car. I just spent that buff on the rest of the car. I run the buff over the tail lights, the headlights, the front and rear bumpers and the roof as well it's one of those things like i've said this for quite a while to like workmates and stuff like that that um like people that own a car like this it's it's a full car that they care about like they don't care about this driver's side door any more than they care about the front door on the other side or they don't care about the bonnet any more than they care about the tailgate i mean i highly doubt they would so it's like it's a car so that, that's what that's why i mean like it's presentation on the entire thing why go and make that one door absolutely perfect when the front bumper needs a polish up that's that's the way i would rather spend my time on a job like this so what i ended up doing i ended up giving it a full detail for it i buffed over the surrounding panels so so the entire car is really exceptionally presentable okay one of there might be one or two imperfections in it the the, pan, the repairs that i did they're not 100 percent. i know that and i know i could have done better which is it comes back to my point of some people saying you should always do your best well i don't agree with that you don't always have to do your best sometimes average is just enough you know like as i say like that i probably could have spent days polishing this thing up i literally could have spent days there would have been nibs through it you know what i mean like then like below the moldings on the doors there could have been some nibs there but it's like man you've got to draw the line somewhere on a car that's probably got stone chips all through the bumper anyway so what's the use in getting some of these panels perfect while others are not quite perfect and, and that's what i did i gave it a buff up i did a few touch-ups here and there made it a more than presentable vehicle that she can just go and drive around um, and be happy with so as it turned out the color came up really nice i find stando blue a really solid paint system with the colors also i find that most of the time you don't even need to do spray out cards and if there's a color chip and it looks good 
it will replicate 99% of the time. I have actually had one that doesn't replicate and I still remember it was like a Lexus rear bumper that we painted and we did have a few issues with it because the, the color was like a little bit too sparkly compared to the color card. Now, all you do then is you just report it. But yeah, most of the time, man, it's, it's really fast, this Stando Blue system and really do enjoy using it. But yeah, even that clear coat, look, it, it lays down really nice. It, it gives me a nice thick film build. So nice amount of protection there. And as I say, I'm uh, really thankful that I didn't have to polish it. And I actually didn't know at this point, because I, I sprayed this before I sprayed my own roof black. So I actually didn't know what I was in for. <laughs> So at this point, I really did love this clear coat, but honestly, I would stay away from it just for the sake of how hard it is to polish. And yeah, I think you could do better than this clear, even if you just went, like if you wanted to stick with the quartz range, they've got the quartz liquid glass, I would say is probably the better one of the two, just for the polishing stage. But this footage here is after fitting it back up. That was on the Sunday. I was actually going to take this home on the same day, on the Saturday, but as it turned out, it did actually start raining. So I'm like, nah, for the, the clear coat that was still a little bit fresh, you don't want those rain marks, leavings marks in your fresh clear coat. So I just, I ended up just saying to the boss, I called the boss, I'm like, hey man, I'm gonna borrow the work you took the work you at home and then came in the next morning did the rest of the fit up or did most of the fit up at work and then I went home and buffed it up and so I had the whole job done on the Saturday and the Sunday and you know I ended up keeping the car for another week because I'm like man she's probably not going to believe that I did a good enough job in two days on the the size of that job. Uh, originally she actually didn't even know that I was going to do the bonnet because it wasn't until I got the car into the workshop and I, I noticed that there was actually a couple of big dents in the bonnet so I'm like no nah, I'll just do it. She was a good friend of mine she's a good person so I just ended up doing it. I think part of the reason it took me so long to do the editing on this is because it was one hell of a job and I was, I think I put all the energy that I could into that one weekend of repairing and painting and polishing this car so that after that I was just exhausted. The sight of this car exhausted me but I think it's been long enough that I'm like okay I can go back and do the editing. So yeah I got the plastic rejuvenator onto all the plastic parts. As you can see there, I did the tires and wheels and it just all came up a million dollars. Did the windows, did the interior. So again, I feel like I've just been waffling on and ranting for the last 10 to 12 minutes. So I do apologize. I probably haven't included as much technical information as I might usually. But I've had fun making this video and I hope you have had fun watching along. I have made a mention in the past that I'm only doing these videos when I want to. I'm making this on a Sunday evening. If I didn't want to be making this video, I would be sitting behind my 4K Bralia TV and watching whatever I wanted to watch or playing whatever game I wanted to play. But I want to sit down here and I want to make this video and if you're happy to watch along, well then good on you. But if not, eh, you know, I can't please everybody. So yeah, if you've enjoyed, give it a big thumbs up and be sure to go and check out some of my merchandise if you would like to support the channel. I'd like to say a big thanks to everyone for watching and if you'd like to support the channel further you're more than welcome to go over and check out some of the merchandise we've got. My personal favourite is those spray suits so they're a good quality collab branded spray suit with a gunman logo on it. There's also hats, drink coolers, hoodies and t-shirts so be sure to go over and check out the link in the description if you are interested.